Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about Aran Kelmo or Yeni as she is called in-game and she's one of the new units following the current major update and overall this unit just kind of does a little bit of everything as you would expect out of a mage and also offers a little bit of a supporting potential through her unique mechanic in her portals Overall, in terms of Apex, I wouldn't say she's like a must-have DPS but I do think she's a very good DPS to have if you like playing actively and making use of positioning plays via her portals. As for the PvE side, I don't think she does anything too outstanding but I think 5 range mages are usually welcome in most content anyway, so she might be good in that sense. So to begin, let's go through her talent, Otherworldly Space. Her damage dealt will be increased by 15 to 30 percent, 3 to 6, which is pretty interesting. Usually, you will see it scale like 10, 15, 20, 30 percent. For Aran Kelmo, she starts off at 15 and goes up to 30 at 6. So that's, you know, I don't think I've seen that in terms of scaling before. Then, after taking action, you can apply a pair of portal terrain effects to two designated blocks. If an allied unit ends their turn on one portal, they are teleported to the other one. All enemies within three blocks of any portal will receive one random debuff after taking action. Uh, this random debuff is usually the shit debuffs like the stat and damage down debuffs. And the portal terrain will last three turns. Each allied unit can only be teleported one time per turn, so you can't use it to go in and out uh, on the same turn. After casting portal, it can only be cast again after 4 turns, so this will go down to 3 turns at 6 stars. And basically at 6 stars, you will be able to cast the portal again the moment it disappears. Roughly, it's gonna be like that, unless you have some kind of egg again effect. Because the portal terrain, the duration of the portal will be based on the in-game turns. Whereas the cooldown before you can cast her portal again will be dependent on your player action, ah, not player, unit actions. So if you have act again, you can cast the portal again, and they will actually, like the old one won't disappear, you have two pairs of portals if you act again enough, but you have to remember which one, like, like which two are the actual pairings. And portal has a high terrain coverage priority, what this means is that there are very few things in the game that can actually override portal as of now, there will be more in the future. But right now, uh, pretty much only opposing Aran Kelbo, Rosalia and Maya can override the terrain. I don't think there is any other unit that has higher terrain priority than her right now, other than those you know, two. When an allied portal exists on the field, this unit will have plus two range, so that's pretty straightforward. As long as you have the terrain effect, you will get plus two range. So, this basically means that turn 1 she is kind of a very passive unit because she needs to cast the portal in order to get her plus 2 range and also to use it as an engage mechanism. So going through her skills, her unique skill, her 1 cost passive is actually just kind of whatever, deflection, increases in and defense by 5% and allies that pass through a portal will take 15% reduced damage for 1 turn. So I see no world where you would rather bring this over Fireball or Windblade unless you like your team is completely giving up on killing the tank or doing single target damage whatsoever you're just bringing uh, double AoE plus like this passive because this thing only lasts one turn so if you're using any egg again effects it's going to be gone and like you know after you like unless you repeat repeatedly run through the portal to maintain this effect it's not really gonna do much I think like you can't really rely on this to tank assassins or whatnot so personally, I'll just bring like a normal one cost attack skill, revalue, one turn cooldown. As for her 2C unique skill, Oracle from Beyond, it's a magic damage single target skill that deals 1.6 time damage. And then if there is an allied portal within two blocks, you will get another 20% damage increase, which combos with the talent, so that's quite a fair bit of damage increase. And it will also recover your HP equal to 20% of the damage dealt, and you can teleport to any block within two blocks after battle so gives her a little bit of self-sustain it's her best single target damage skill and there's also like a minor retreat something like Kyra you can jump back two blocks after you use this you can also use it to jump into a portal and you can come out from the like you can go back to the rest of your team if you run very far out to attack a 3c dimensional explosion so it has a passive 
After taking action, if this hero has not attacked this turn and is on an allied portal, they can move an additional 2 blocks and attack again. And any current buffs do not lose their turn count. So what this means is that uh, she can use her portals to engage instead of just using it as escape with a 2c. Usually only units with act again can abuse this mechanic to engage, but she doesn't really have one on her other skills, so they built it into her 3c. So you're kind of forced to bring this 3c. And then as for the actual active skill, it's a magic damage AoE, where you can target yourself or a portal, and it deals 0.4 times AoE damage to all enemies within 4 blocks and will apply 2 random debuffs and delusions. If the enemies are within 3 blocks of your portal after taking action, they will receive another 2 random debuffs. So this plus 2 will stack with the one that is already in the talent, but it's mostly just weaker debuffs. This delusion cannot be dispelled and it lasts 2 turns. If this skill hits 3 or more enemy units, its cooldown will be decreased by 2 turns, so it goes down to 2 turns. But I think this 3C, like the active skill is actually kinda ass because the range is incredibly low. Basically, in order to get proper value out of this, there's only like 3 actual scenarios. The first scenario is that your opponent is playing very passive, you delay casting the portal on turn 1, you cast it on turn 2, and then you use it on turn 3 because the portal has a range. So like the... She can create 2 portals, the further portal can be created 4 blocks away from her, and the defensive portal usually will be created within 2 blocks of her. So on turn 1, you can't really cast the portal near enough to the enemy team for it to land within 4 blocks of their units. So if you delay casting it for 1 turn, you can get value out of it that way by turn 3. Or on the flip side, if you're playing very defensively and your opponent is running at you, you might be able to catch them like in the middle of the map. And on the third scenario is literally like your second round of portals. Usually the map will be a lot smaller by then and your portals will actually be near enough to your enemy team. But otherwise, I think you'll mostly be getting value out of her other skills. Uh, in terms of her normal skills, Holy Word can be considered if you need her to do some like, of healing and you're playing with a healerless team and you want a little bit of healing for your other team members because her 2C already heals herself. So if you want to heal other people, you can consider Holy Word. Then, you know, if you want to play it as a AoE unit, you just bring Black Hole. You know, we don't, we don't need any introduction to this. She does have mass resist if you ever need to bring it against like a Lost Ham or something. So, you know, just be aware that she does bring this. I mean, not bring, she can bring this. As for her class, I run her in order her class to combo with Lightbringer, who buffs all holy units. You can run Mage if you want, I don't think there's any real difference. The int is the same. In terms of your class stones, you'll be running in HP defense. I don't think anyone should be scared of Fort Vega by this point, so there's no real reason to run skill. And my arena, arena enchant, you know, they're a little bit psychopathic. I'm running double crit because... Well, I don't think there's any point in running double crit reduction. I think she'll just die to assassins anyway. And because I'm playing the reflect build, I actually want the assassins to do more damage to me and kill themselves in the process. For her soldier choices, the most common will be Crystal Warlocks, as I mentioned, the Reflect build with Dropnir. And if you want to make sure you want maximum single target damage, you can consider bringing Fairy Spirit Prophets. Well, she has a bunch of other good troops, like Fighting Monks is actually a pretty decent troop, but I see no real reason to bring this instead of Fairy Prophets. Unless you are like fighting a tank that you are very confident they are going to bring a magic defensive troop, like uh, Royal Protector, the infantry, or like Templar Knights or something like that, and you want a troop that does physical damage, because monks do do physical damage, in case, you know, he doesn't look like it, but he does physical damage. Sorceress, there's no point, no real point in bringing this when you're, you have this. And Firebrand, usually this would be the option you want to bring if you're fighting a magic defense tank, but because she has monks, you don't really need Firebrand, monks will do more damage. But other than that, you'll mostly be sticking to these two. In terms of equipment, most commonly you will see this uh, Scepter double tenure into Dropnir set. This is the standard one. You bring Dropnir so that you can counter kill most assassins, except for Double Bladed Werner and Nebulous Rogue Epsilon for the most part. Pretty much any other assassin that uses a fast skill will die to Dropnir. 
and you know in terms of armor i actually showcased death rope here which is also a slightly psychopathic item choice because what this does is basically if you're not confident that your hp will be enough to counter kill an assassin you can rely on death rope to proc the plus 20 percent damage taken and your counter attack will basically be guaranteed to finish off the kill but death rope doesn't have any base stats uh, well not base stat, doesn't have like a stat boost effect unlike Tenyo which boosts 10% HP so you have to take that into account for the helmet you can run glory on the world uh, glory on, off yeah glory of the world and what this does is basically against twilight users you will be able to maintain your holy light effect on your troops and it should increase your survivability by quite a bit I don't know by how much though and whether if it matters or not because from what I've seen so far like Die hard most commonly as a Twilight user. Usually, if the Die Hard is properly built, your Alan Kelmo will still die even if you proc the Glory effect. So, I think it's a little bit questionable how effective this item would be in terms of defensive utility. So, overall, I would say, you know, if you have a tenure, you have a dream. Plus 3 is the king. As for Enchant choices, Breeze is pretty nice because it allows her to run out to engage the enemy. And in you're using a 2C, you can use it to retreat quite safely. But if you are playing a more slower and defensive oriented box, I think Clock is an okay choice if you want to focus on her as a AoE DPS. Because Black Hole does have quite a high cooldown. And if you don't get good debuffs out of it, you can be kind of useless for a good amount of time. So if you're not really concerned with running out to engage, you can just stick with Clock. This is one of the classic examples of using Aran Kelmo's portal as a retreat mechanism. So you will most commonly see this with Kyra or Lost Hemp as the prominent abusers. Although anything with some sort of move again after attacking can kind of abuse this as well. So think of Die Hard, Spirit Boots Wet M, Spirit Boots Acclaim. You know, there's like quite a lot of people that can abuse this as an escape mechanism. So, you know, it's pretty simple, you know, you just go in, you attack, jump onto the portal on the exit, then you go back to the, you know, the other portal. Although, one thing you want to be careful about doing this is, you know, like, if someone on your team wants to use it to go in and another guy wants to use it to go out, you have to be careful because when you retreat with the portal, you are going to block the portal because you're standing on it. So like in this situation, if your Yeni wants to you know, use the portal to get in with her 3C again, she can't because Kyra needs to you know, vacate the spot first. So you know, just be careful for that in terms of your, you know, your team planning. In terms of using the portals as an engaging mechanism, it's also really straightforward. You are mostly going to pair this with any kind of egg again unit. So in this example, we have Die Hard here. So Die Hard just strikes on the portal. He shows up on the other side. And then, you know, you do your thing, your AoE or your attack or whatever. So just now we mentioned as a retreat mechanism, you know, Die Hard is also one of the abusers of the retreat mechanism. But because he used the portal to go in, he can't use it to get out. Because you cannot use the portal twice per turn. Uh, where is it? Yeah, each ally unit can only be teleported one time per turn. So you can't use it to literally get in and then get out. So only one way for the turn. So beyond the basics, this is something that you might not be aware of if you haven't used uh, Yeni enough. And the thing is with her portals, act again, basically any effect that triggers will trigger before you actually go through the portal. So in this example, you see, I use the egg again. I'm able to cast my heavy strike formation. And I also get my goddess tear off before I show up on the other side. And you know, yeah, you can use this as a you know example of an entrance mechanism. And you can see that on the way out as well. As you see next turn. When I go out from the portal. I trigger all my effects before coming back and you basically see that I don't trigger Goddess Tear on the way out because the Goddess Tear is considered to have been triggered at this point, not this point. 
And the most extreme example of said mechanic of all your effects proccing before you go through the portal is actually with TGS. So, you know, look at this and see what happens. I teleport my tank up. I act again before going through the portal. So the act again condition actually happens at, you know, before you go through the portal. So I'm standing right next to Gintoki when I'm on the portal. So I act again and then I come out from the portal. So in this example, I did it with a tank, but you can also do it by like sending up another DPS coming out doing your thing and then they kind of have to pick between dealing with that other DPS or your TGS. So like this is one of the more extreme examples of how to use the portals. So it's not just using act against to get in and using move against to get out. You can do this kind of thing as well. And you know, that's mostly all I wanted to cover about Yeni. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next one. Peace.